Hi, this is Judy. Welcome to Nashville North Studios and Embracing Differences. Uh, that's our group show, and in our solo room, we have a duo show. So it is uh, Van Gogh to Pollock featuring Tim Faraday and Jason Antonelli. And today we're going to talk to Tim a little bit about his journey to art and his coastal canvases. As you can see, uh, we're right here, not too far from the ocean and the back bays. And uh, we have a lot of beautiful things to see in the area. Here's some of Jason's works. And uh, here we go with Tim's. And you can see uh, the concentration is on our scenery and uh, the shore that we so enjoy. And of course, our wildlife that's in the ocean and a few wild surfers too. This wall combines both Jason and Tim's work. So you can see that diverse works can work together on your walls at home. And we're going to have uh, Tim come in now and uh, we're going to sit down and talk to him. Hi, Tim. Hello. Okay, putting the camera down. This is your camera girl, Judy. Let's see if I can get that straight. Can you see, Tim? Let's see. And there he is. We're good. Okay, so Tim, welcome to Nashville North Studios. Thanks for having me. Very We're happy to be here. We're delighted to have you and your work. And oh, you have accomplished a great deal in a short amount of time. Well, thanks. Uh, knowing that I had a show coming up, it really focuses your attention, and I, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you. And, um, you know, many artists have uh, drawn for a long time, and you started before you could hold a pencil. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been drawing for as long as I can remember. Um, and, in fact, I've, I've told you the story that when I was younger, I would sometimes draw absent-mindedly with my finger wherever I was on, you know, uh, while I was having dinner or while I was watching TV. And uh, it, it worried some of my parents' friends until they just figured out that all I was doing was, was drawing when I wasn't doing anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was an artist. Uh, he did quite a bit of art when he was growing up. Uh, and we still have some of his uh, pencil drawings of scenery from Germany when he was over there during World War II. Uh, my mom tried painting for a little while. Um, and my brother, who is a novelist now, was, is a very good artist. Um, and my wife is a watercolorist. Uh, so and your children are creative too. They are. I have uh, daughters who are very creative, uh, good photographers, good writers. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a sister who does uh, quilts that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's always been something that, mm -hmm. that was important to us. So you're a family of storytellers in I, one way or another. I think so. You know, I, uh, I say sometimes that um, story was, was a big part of our family growing up. My grandfather uh, lived in Carteret, where my mom was from, and we would go up there on the weekends a lot. And the main entertainment was the adults telling stories around the dining room table. Mm -hmm. And I, I think some families are about, some families like to argue, and some families like to talk about their ailments, uh, and some families are theatrical. But my family was all about storytelling for, for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my brothers became an English teacher. Uh, my, younger, my youngest brother is the funniest guy I know. He, if he takes a trip to the grocery store and tells you about it, you'll be, you'll be laughing. So, story is very important to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in your paintings, you're, you're telling us a lot of stories. And you started these after you left the press of Atlantic City. Yeah, I, I studied uh, English and journalism and art when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And I worked for 
a number of newspapers as a writer, as an editor, and usually as an artist as well. And for a long time, I was the graphics editor at the Press of Atlantic City, uh, where when you got the charts and the, and the maps and the, that kind of stuff done, you could do illustrations. Mm -hmm. And the illustrations, they would illustrate a story, but they'd also have to tell a story mm -hmm. within it. So you'd have to try to find a visual metaphor that, that worked. So a story about um, people having trouble at their weddings, I, would, I illustrated with uh, a couple falling off the top of a, of a cake, of a wedding cake. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you kind of was, you were always looking for that kind of story. And now in, in my work, I, I, I think there are a lot of stories. There's, mm -hmm. um, I have a painting of a, a mother and a baby dolphin, and I've seen these dolphins off the coast when I've been out there paddling. Um, and it's just amazing. It's my, my favorite thing. Um, and some, some of these places along the coast, uh, there's a painting of uh, Mill Creek in Upper Township, and it's, it's at the exact same spot where I got uh, stuck in the mud when I went out and the tide went out with me and I didn't realize that and coming in I had to wallow through the, the creek mud to get back to the bank. So instead of going with the wind you were going with the tide. I was going with the tide, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So uh, while you've uh, been, once you left the um, employment of the press and uh, you started taking some classes with notable artists in the area. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of work on uh, computers professionally and I, I wanted to get back to creating art with my hands the way I had in college mm -hmm. uh, and I studied with uh, I, I had never even tried pastel before but I took a some workshops with Stan Spurlock down in Goshen and uh, he's an amazing teacher and I studied pastel with Rene Leopardi as well mm -hmm. and then I started taking uh, classes through the Cape May County Library System and mm -hmm. at the Barnes Studio in Millville uh, I, Sue Rao uh, taught a water club class that I took, uh, and I took a, a multi multimedia class, I guess it was, with um, Cheryl Knowles Harrigan at Atlantic Cape Community College. Mm -hmm. And that was really fascinating because we covered a lot of ground and you learned uh, the techniques of how to start different kinds of paintings and what kind of materials to use and what kind of things to mm -hmm. look out for. It was a nice, a nice grounding. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, as a writer, would write what you knew, and as a painter, you're painting what you know. Yeah, the advice that you always hear for writers is write what you know. And I always think better advice would be write what you want to know, mm -hmm. because you'll have to find out about it in order to write. That was the fun of being a reporter. You, you became an ex a, a temporary expert in something different every few days. Mm -hmm. uh, so, And I think painting's the same way, that you... You paint what you want to know about, what you want to understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm drawn to the shore mm -hmm. uh, in this area. I, I didn't live at the shore growing up, and now I'm, I'd say I have the zeal of a convert. I, I, it, just everything about it fascinates me. No, so it's beautiful. It, it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. and so you begin to, instead of just sitting in a chair and appreciating it, you begin to try to study it, to understand it. Uh, one of the first things I noticed was when I got serious about painting, I would stare at the sky trying to learn more about clouds. Or when you're at the beach, you're watching the waves come in and trying to see how the, the color of the wave changes as it, as it rises and as it breaks, as the sunlight comes through it or it deflects the beach. And you see what the wind does. You know, the same wind that is pushing the waves, it, it pushes the, the marsh grass and the trees along the marsh are bent over because of the steady breeze that they get. So these coastal canvases tell your story of what you're currently doing. Yeah, this kind of, when I was getting ready for this show, it kind of came together uh, pretty organically as a collection mm -hmm. uh, because I was just following what I was interested in. Mm -hmm. I, th I think if you're creating any kind of art, it, it's a good idea to, to keep in mind that if you're fascinated by something, somebody else will be fascinated by it as well. Mm -hmm. So if you follow your interests, they might be interesting to other people. Uh, so mm -hmm. Some of your paintings were uh, surfers, yeah. lifeguards, yeah. things like that. So uh, everybody's interested in them. Yeah, well, I, I think that um, one of the fascinating things about this area, one of the valuable things about this area, the reason people want to live here is because you don't just live here 
you take part in it, you experience it. There are so many people down here who run or bike on the boardwalk every morning or who do yoga on the beach or who surf or, uh, you know, and when you go to the beach and, you, and you, you observe these things, it's almost like you're taking a figure drawing class because these are world-class athletes who are guarding our beaches or, mm -hmm. or who are surfing, or, you know, so it's, it's a thing I enjoy. I, I'm, I'm a terrible surfer, but I love it. I love doing it. I, I like kayaking. I love playing in the water. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that experience is something I'm trying to capture, mm -hmm. not just the static images of what's out there, but the movement mm -hmm. and, and the movement of people in, in that environment. And as you said earlier, those of us who've chosen to come here uh, really uh, value what we experience because it's something we didn't have before. Right. Yeah, I think we appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you said that one of the things you liked about this show was uh, Jason. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when, when I'm painting, I'm, I'm drawn to the color blue, as you, can under, as you can see. And I always wonder, what is it about a blue sky that makes us feel a certain way? Mm -hmm. And really, what is it about staring at, at a horizon the ocean that that makes us feel you know it's almost rejuvenating mm -hmm. to do that so if you if you're trying to capture that on canvas it's like Magritte's painting this is not a pipe you know mm -hmm. these th this is not a beach it's a painting of a beach mm -hmm. so so how do you capture that same feeling if the answer to that is in the colors that you choose and part of the answer is then then you're talking about not only does the sky make us feel a certain way, but just blue makes us feel a certain way, mm -hmm. or green makes us feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So what I like about this show is that pairing my work with Jason's, I see him using a lot of the same colors, but in a non-representational way, and I think he gets the same feeling that I'm trying to get in my landscapes and my seascapes mm -hmm. in his abstracts. Mm -hmm. So it fascinates me because the color, it's really just the color at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And he was here and chatted with us on Saturday. Yeah, he did a good job. We put a little uh, interview, his interview up, uh, so that's on our YouTube channel. Uh, that This will also be on our YouTube channel. Well, one of the great things about um, painting is that you begin to live a certain lifestyle and you meet other artists, artists like Jason, but mm -hmm. there's a wonderful art community in southern New Jersey in this area and people are very supportive of each other um, they're very welcoming and I've really enjoyed that aspect of, be of becoming an artist meeting other artists and getting to know them mm -hmm. and of course that kind of community is impossible unless there's a place for those people to meet mm -hmm. um, which is what this is Nashville North was the first place that ever showed one of my paintings and it was the first place where I met a lot of these people and became friends with them and I think it's just a wonderful resource for the area. Thank you. Well, you Thank well, you. Thanks we, for having me. Part of our mission, if you will, it's become a mission, is is to keep art and music in the forefront right. uh, for all creative types um, and writers. We have some books here, too, that uh, yeah. local people have written. Uh, there has to be some reward and some encouragement for creativity and and that reward is always always for me in the doing of it yeah would you say that you feel rewarded when you paint a painting i i do i, I would say so uh, mm -hmm. but i also think there's there's in the doing of it you become something mm -hmm. it, and so what what i find when i meet people and i talk with them is i'm seeing people who became who they wanted to be through their art. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of local artists that I think have, have done that. But it would be taking that big first step. Yeah, right. You know, and so would you encourage others to do that? Absolutely. I, I think, um, and you've probably observed this yourself, every, everybody when they're a child, when they're a kid, is a, an artist, is a dancer, is a singer, is an athlete, and then eventually we get older and we think, oh, well, we're not good enough in each of those things. We see specialists who are better than us and we let those things fall. Uh, we, we stop doing them. 
but we still have that in us. So I, you know, I encourage everybody to, to paint, to, to dance, to sing, to, you know, and to write. Mm -hmm. And you also sing. Because you have, as except for COVID, uh, when we couldn't have our Christmas uh, soiree, yeah. uh, you used to come uh, with your good buddy. My friend Greg Clayton, mm -hmm. uh, who's a, a very good bass player and guitar player, uh, he and I perform together sometimes. And we're also in the, uh, the Sure Thing band together, which is so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, five guys singing old rock and roll mm -hmm. and uh it's it's just a treat and uh, we have some film of that which i might put up on youtube that'd be great <laughs> we're hoping to get back on the ocean city boardwalk this summer okay if everything calms down enough okay. that we can do that well maybe we can book you for one of our fourth fridays yeah that'd be great wouldn't that be fun you know yeah. one of the things that I, I told myself the first year i left the press was i was going to say yes to as many things as i could mm -hmm. so that's how i ended up helping to teach yoga on the beach and how I ended up in a band and how I ended up here mm -hmm. as a painter and you know who knows what other trouble it'll get me into. Yeah but, well lots of it we hope. Yeah I hope so. <laughs> so would you like to talk a little bit about your paintings and I'll follow you with the camera a little bit? Sure. Okay. Picking up the camera. Stay with us folks. Okay so hi Tim there we go. Well, I mentioned this one. I mentioned the, the, this is called Mother and Child. And mm -hmm. It's just amazing. In the spring, the dolphins and their young are out swimming up and down the coast. Uh, and it's, it's just a beautiful thing to see. Uh, the painting underneath it is called Surfing by Number. And the idea behind it was that the kind of art that was in those old paint by number kits where everything is very flat, there are no black lines. Uh, but I wanted to see if I could capture action in that same style. I just, I love that style. Um, some of these smaller paintings are plein air pieces. Uh, a couple of them were done at Crow Creek Farm. And this is actually, you know, it's, it's hard to be a, a landscape painter in South Jersey and not be an environmentalist because you can see what's happening in front of you as this beautiful area that we have kind of changes. The, as, this, as the seawater rises, the salt comes in and these trees along the edge of the, uh, of the marsh die. So there's, when you see those dead trees or you see the, the saltwater phragmites moving in and taking the place of the cattails, uh, you really get a sense of how fluid everything is and how, how delicate the environment around here is. In fact, this painting, which is called Clouds and Cliffs, is actually a painting of uh, erosion uh, on the Avalon Beach after last winter. And you can see the, uh, the rocks that were put in years ago to try to stem the erosion, and they were covered in sand, and that sand washed away in the storms of the winter. So, you know, the coastline is very dynamic. It's always changing. And really, you know, this area is just as beautiful as it is. It's also very fragile. You know, we need to really uh, treasure it. So you also have done things like the lighthouse. Right. Here's uh, the grouping of uh, Jason and Tim together. Here's a painting with a story. This is Sluice Creek uh, in Goshen. And at the very, very back of the painting, there are little islands. And those are the islands that the rum runners supposedly came up to and left their whiskey during Prohibition. Rum runners. And the locals would take the dirt roads out into the swamp and pick, pick up the alcohol. Wow, shades of, uh, what was that, Atlantic City? Boardwalk and, Empire. Yeah, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Yeah. So and you have some beautiful waves. I'm just always trying to capture the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the sea changes every day. It's so powerful and we, we put all kinds of personalities on the sea, but really it doesn't care about us at all. Um, it's just there. Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, I love that. So I'm trying to capture that action. Yeah. So Tim, we want to say thank you very much for coming today and, and for spending some time with us and sharing your wonderful art and uh, 
your views on uh, how you became an artist, and we look forward to your future and seeing what comes next. Thanks very much. So thank you very much. And please check us out on YouTube. You'll see Tim there with his uh, a video of his artwork. So take care now. See y'all later. Bye-bye.